Hey guys, this is Fixer Med. Welcome back to my high yield hematology and oncology review series for the USMLE Step 1, NBME CBSE, and NBME CAS examinations. In this series, I will be covering the entire system of hematology and oncology in a comprehensive but high yield manner. This will be part four of my multi part video series of doing so. Today, we will be taking a look at an overview of Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia. Without any further delay, let's go ahead and get started on today's content. Let's open today with an overview of Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia. Definition, cancer of plasmacetoid cells. The ending of oid indicates cells resembling plasma cells but are distinct, so be sure to keep that in mind when thinking of plasmacytoid cells and plasma cells. Diagnostic marker, IgMM protein spike on serum protein electrophoresis compared to IgGM protein spike in MM. Clinical differences lax hypercalcemia, lytic lesions, Bentz-Jones proteinuria, or amyloidosis, clinical presentation, hyperviscosity syndrome, symptoms, headache, blurry vision, tinnitus, or Raynaud phenomenon. All right, guys, now that we have covered all of the content, let's go ahead and take a look at some questions to review the knowledge you have gained so far. A 65-year-old male presents to the clinic with complaints of recurrent headaches, blurry vision, and tinnitus over the past few weeks. Physical examination reveals evidence of Raynaud phenomenon. Laboratory investigations show an elevated IgM M protein spike on serum protein electrophoresis, SPEP. Which of the following conditions is most likely responsible for the patient's symptoms? All right, I think I gave you guys enough time here. I'm going to move on to see what the correct answer is and what the reasoning behind it is. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Otherwise, moving on now. The correct answer is D, Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia. This patient's clinical presentation of recurrent headaches, blurry vision, tinnitus, and Raynaud phenomenon, along with an elevated IgMM protein spike on SPEP, is suggestive of hyperviscosity syndrome a common complication of Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia due to the overproduction of IgM monoclonal protein. This condition can lead to impaired blood flow and tissue ischemia, manifesting as the patient's symptoms. All right, let's go ahead and see why the other answer choices are incorrect. The incorrect choices can be explained as follows. A, multiple myeloma. Multiple myeloma typically presents with symptoms such as bone pain due to lytic lesions, hypercalcemia, anemia, and renal insufficiency, along with IgG or IgAM protein spikes on serum protein electrophoresis, SPEP. While headaches and visual disturbances can occur in advanced stages, the absence of lytic lesions, hypercalcemia, and the presence of IgMM protein spike make Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia a more likely diagnosis in this case. B. Hodgkin lymphoma. Hodgkin lymphoma commonly presents with painless lymphadenopathy, fever, night sweats, and weight loss. It is not typically associated with the production of monoclonal immunoglobulins or hyperviscosity syndrome. The absence of lymphadenopathy and constitutional symptoms in this patient makes Hodgkin lymphoma an unlikely diagnosis. C. Chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL, is characterized by lymphocytosis, particularly of small, mature-appearing lymphocytes. While CLL can cause autoimmune complications, including autoimmune hemolytic anemia or immune thrombocytopenia, it is not commonly associated with the production of monoclonal immunoglobulins or hyperviscosity syndrome. Additionally, CLL typically does not present with symptoms such as headaches, blurry vision, or Raynaud phenomenon. E. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia, ALL, is characterized by the proliferation of immature lymphoid cells in the bone marrow. While ALL can present with symptoms such as fatigue, fever, bleeding tendencies, and bone pain, it is not typically associated with the production of monoclonal immunoglobulins or hyperviscosity syndrome. The absence of bone pain and bleeding tendencies, along with the presence of IgM M protein spike, make Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia a more likely diagnosis than ALL in this case. All right, guys, that is all I have for this video today. If you like this type of content, 
Be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this in the future. Be sure to leave any questions, comments, or concerns down in the comment section below. This is Fixer Med signing off. Be sure to have a great day, everyone, and good luck studying as always. Goodbye.